So I'm going to do it in a form of a statement uh, as bearing the collective responsibility. And I'll try to walk you through the important aspects, the important policies that we have included after many debates that we have included in the uh, People's, Str People's Struggle Manifesto. First of all, uh, let me quote a few lines that appeared in the, one of the publications by the Socialist Alternative, a socialist movement based in the United States of America. Those lines were appeared in the chapter, one of the chapters, one of the, in one of the books, in one of the chapters, making path to socialism. They stated, if you don't know where you want to go, no road will take you there. However, knowing where you want to go is only the first part. It is not at all the same as knowing how to get there. The Manifesto of the People's Struggle Alliance, which was launched today, answers the question, where do you want to go from here? We answer, we want to go towards socialism. And it does not just stop there. It presents a short-term program that addresses the urgent needs of the people of the crisis-ridden Sri Lanka and all the contingencies of the bodies of political economy, law and democracy and geopolitics. Dear comrades, let me walk you through some of the sections of the manifesto. There are three main sections in the manifesto. Firstly, the very first section, we are presenting the long-term program based on the ideals of the people's power or people's government or if you wish, people's rule. This is actually where we want to go as a political party, as a movement, as an alliance, as, uh, as carrying with us the uh, society of Sri Lanka, which, is, which, which has a specific characteristics as an underdeveloped, backward capitalist country. In the long-term program, we have identified the key areas that require systematic transformation supported by a comprehensive set of short-term and long-term solutions, programs and interventions. In the second section of the manifesto, if you read, it is an embedded part of the long-term program. We are presenting the transitional program that addresses short-term needs and contingencies of the macroeconomy, democratic rights of the people, and welfare of the masses that urges to break away from the IMF-led austerity. As you will see, in this section, we have highlighted not only the question of economy, but also the necessity of transforming the state structure, securing democracy, transitional solutions for the national question of Sri Lanka, and extending its boundaries uh, and revisiting oppressive anti-democratic laws and laws that violate the sovereign rights of the people to determine its monetary, fiscal, economic policy in general. For example, as Comrade Kubudu also mentioned, we should get rid of the so-called central bank independence uh, law which passed in 2023. Also, the recently passed bill, economic transformation, now it became a law. So we are planning to get rid of those laws. Thirdly, in the third part, as a specific appendix, we are presenting our program, Exit IMF. Exit IMF is a political choice that necessitated by the failures of the existing deal and its enormous pressure on the people of Sri Lanka and its future generations. Dear comrades, we can observe that policies, principles and the people who systematically created the economic crisis are still in power and intend to continue the same policy, same set of policies. We see a continuation of neoliberal free market capitalism, which miserably failed in 2022. The proletariat of the country, of this country, would not get anything out of these policies. The electoral cycle, on the other hand, also will leave them with hopelessness. Let me briefly highlight 
highlight some of the themes that we paid our attention in the long term and transitional program. In the section of the state, if you read, in the section of the state structure, you will be able to read the way we analyze the existing bourgeois state structure and its limits. And at the same time, we show you the real possibilities of democracy that goes beyond the liberal democratic state. Thus, the basis for such democratic practice is, in our view, are following. Firstly, the approach to democracy cannot be delinked from the, economic, from the economic democracy. The right of the people to own, manage, and utilize their labor and surplus labor in a meaningful way. Thus, in our democratic framework, the state is not a state of the few, the few of the ruling elites, bureaucrats, and technocrats but a state that increasingly surpasses those conventional liberal values, class powers, and all the bourgeois uh, values and rights. Comrades, we want to gain real democracy. A radical approach to democracy is much required in this historical juncture where the executive branch of the, this democratic state and the parliament are shamelessly violating even the existing democratic values of the country. Securing what we have as democracy, deepening their practices and extending limits and move towards radical practices of democracy and direct democracy is our main objective. Therefore, secondly, our approach goes beyond the liberal, just, liberal justification for the balance of power among the executive branches Parliament, executive branch, parliament, and the judicial system. The challenge that we are not shying away is to take up the contribution and representation of the people's power in these democratic bodies through, firstly, council democracy, uh, council democracy at the grassroots, secondly, constitutionalized direct democracy with recording powers, before recording powers, and thirdly, by political empowerment of the people at the workplaces. Dear comrades, let me tell you a word about exploitation. Because if you look at the so-called popular left in Sri Lanka, so-called popular left in Sri Lanka do not talk about exploitation at all, which is one of the cornerstones of Marxist thinking, leftist thinking. We firmly believe within a socialist state, we must eradicate the social conditions that exist to exploit a human being by another human being. On that guiding principle, we intend, intend to start our work towards eradicating this, the economic structure of the state that justifies the production, distribution, and reinvestment based on the decisions of the few on the back of the labor of many. Furthermore, in the case of new economic model that we present, the decisions taken by the socialist state should be reviewed by the people themselves. And once again, we emphasize the fundamental importance of the involvement of the people in economic decision making of this state. In order to grasp the grasp our uh, program for this, you should read the section on economic, political, social, cultural, and environment. And also, I urge you to read the section on uh, labor policy. And we have a special section in our manifesto addressing the global conditions of capitalism that demand the ideal people before profit, needs before market exchange, and the civilization before market. Thus, in our manifesto, we address the real limits of exploitation of nature by capital in the section ecology. Also, I would like to talk a little bit about the constitution. The constitution, the proposal that we are presenting is, in order to fulfill the objectives of the above that I mentioned, we want to have a socialist uh, constitution. In our manifesto, we have listed down policies that we base our new constitution. Firstly, immediate appointment of constitutional council. Secondly, the constitutional council must be, must be represented by the elected members of the working class, uh, farmers, workers, uh, fishing communities, and also legal, critical legal experts. Thirdly, uh, Constitutional Council must listen to the voices of the people in public assemblies. Fourthly, the Constitution should be strong enough to curtail the possibilities of passing laws that limit people's democratic rights, generating tensions with tension between ethnicities, 
and divide people on the cultural, religious, and gender line, especially the LGBT, LGBTQ rights. Finally, we want to have a constitution with the values of uh, values of uh, listening to people and their and their voices. Is this doable? Can we can this be done? We are we strongly believe it can be done. As Marx correctly said, the law must be changed according to the legal nature of things, according to the legal nature of the social contract, but not according to the dead traditions or powers of the few. We must highlight that in such a constitution, one of our main objectives is to find solutions to the national question, uh, national question of the Tamils, Muslims and Malay Makkal Tamils, with democratic rights and self-governing territories with decentralized state powers. Also, let me talk a little bit about the People's Councils, because in the recent past, when we announced that we are contesting for the election, some of the critiques of the popular list left once again, posed the question where, are you done with the idea, or are you done with the political principle, power beyond the Avarna? We want to say, we just started. We just started. We just started to move the power beyond the Avarna. If you actually read the this manifesto uh, on the sec in the section of uh, People's Council, you would understand that how politically immature and short-sighted those claims are. If you are so skeptical that we have given up the project of democrat democracy from the bottom strata of the society, I urge you to read the section of People's Council in the manifest manifesto. For the critics of the uh, popular left, I would like I would like to ask that. We know that it is a hard battle, it is an uphill battle, but we are not going to give up the battle. This is what Marx and Engels taught us. We are not just driven by the Marxist theory, but also by human hope. Among other things, let me point out the key things in the transitional program in the manifesto, which is our decision for anti-austerity policies, which introduced by the IMF, Ranil and Nandala at the Central Bank. We identified the importance of macro level welfare program to the masses at, the, at this critical juncture. For example, we are going to focus on uh, fuel quota for a welfare price for transportation sector, electricity and energy quota for farmers, fishermen, and small medium scale producers, certified lower prices, lowest prices. Uh, reducing tariff for agricultural equipment, securing medicine and securing medicine for uh, patients, and uh, we are going to be uh, concerned about the reproduction health as well. And also, one of the things that we highlighted through our, throughout our uh, ideological struggle was actually exist exit IMF strategy. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the exist exit IMF strategy. We will implement. Uh, an international framework on debt justice and a new audit of Sri Lanka's existing uh, amount of debt. We are, our attempt is basically to reduce Sri Lanka's total debt by 60%. If you look at the deal that the Royal Commission is having with IMF, is just very minimum, 10%. But our intention is to reduce our total debt by 60%. For that, we want to have uh, uh, international body, international auditing unit to carefully evaluate the kind of debt that Sri Lanka uh, has. For example, if you look at the mass of the debt of Sri Lanka, uh, it is full of predatory loans, it is full of odious debt, it is full of illegitimate loans. So there should be a way, there should be just debt justice to reduce the, uh, uh, reduce this debt from the debt mountain. Secondly, Sri Lanka must enter into a debtor's common bargaining collective and a debt cancellation campaign. Sri Lanka should start direct negotiations with the creditors. Uh, uh, also, Sri Lanka should start direct, uh, uh, direct negotiations with China. Thirdly, debt payment should not start until, econom until the economic stability is completely uh, achieved. For example, uh, unemployment rate should be reduced to a certain margin, certain level and also levels of prices, economic development indicators, and also the foreign reserves should have a certain level of improvement. Fourthly, we want to highlight that 
we are all for import management policy. It should be implemented for at least five years to secure Sri Lanka's foreign reserves. Funds should be secured through promotion of import substitution, industries and export-oriented industries, especially during the time period of moratorium, which I mentioned, for five years. The local supply chain, most of the uh, mainstream economies do not pay any attention to the promotion of the local supply chain, promotion of the small-scale producers, promotion of medium-scale producers, producers of the, uh, at, the, at the bottom layer of in, the, in the supply chain. So we are proposing a policy to develop uh, and promote local supply chain and to strengthen the uh, export promotion policy and, to, and also to counter uh, imports with uh, the local supply chain promotion. Finally, uh, fifthly actually, uh, we want to uh, have an independent monetary and uh, fiscal policy. Right now, the fiscal and the monetary policy of Sri Lanka is actually governed by, not by the central bank, but by the IMF. So if you, look, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you ask me the question, what kind of democracy exists in Sri Lanka at this point? It is not a democracy, it is a bankocracy. Finally, the government should actively intervene in the economy with the long-term objective of developing aggregate demand and redistribution of wealth. If you look at any economic crisis in the West, the government intervention is so high and so crucial, so swift. But if you, but why the hypocrisy that the the same policies are not good for the to, to curtail the impacts of the economic crisis of Sri Lanka? So finally, comrades, let me tell you this. After a long speech, uh, it is a small book, but a powerful one. And read it, use it. It is a class paper. Thank you so much.